Um, my name is Dr. Jennifer Daniels, and um, I attended Harvard University and graduated in 1979 with a bachelor's degree in biology with honors. Then I received my medical degree from the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine, and I received my master's in business administration from the Wharton School. Then I proceeded to uh, complete a, cumulatively, a three-year family practice residency, and I became board certified in family practice medicine and practiced as a board certified physician for 10 years, saying that people should have a choice in what kind of health care they want. Okay. So um, I think it's perfectly okay for people to choose to continue to receive the kind of health care presently offered, or that presently has a monopoly in the United States. At the same time, I feel people should also have the choice of uh, uh, refusing or choice of doing other things or even doing nothing. Uh, in the human condition, people have an eternal fear of death. They want to postpone it. And an eternal fear of health, I mean of sickness. They want to get well if they're sick. And even worse, if they're not sick, they want to prevent illness. And it's this desire which has been uh, tremendously exploited to the tune of $2 trillion. Um, and people have been, have been um, deceived into believing that by engaging what we call the healthcare system, they can actually live longer and live healthier, when actually the opposite is the case. It's a disease creation system that actually murders 767,000 Americans every single year. creates death and creates illness. So when you say, well, how would we take it back? I should, we shouldn't take it back. We should walk away from it. That would be like um, you have dirty clothes and you're taking your dirty clothes to the car wash to get them clean. You keep taking them to the car wash and you come back and pick them up. They're dirty, they're torn, nothing's pressed or folded, and you're very upset and you're very angry with the car wash. And the car wash says, well, if you just pay us three times as much money, we think we can do a better job. And we're going to do research and we're going to study these machines we're using. And you keep bringing your clothes to the car wash and each time they're shredded. And then you go to the government and say, once we regulate those car washes. When really, you're using an inappropriate mechanism for cleaning your clothes. So what you should do then is wash your clothes by hand. In other words, do it yourself. The analogy in um, medicine or health would be self-healing. Or get a washing machine or something more appropriate to the task of cleaning your clothes. And so the present industry um, that we are now spending $2 trillion on is totally inappropriate for anyone to engage if what they're after is better health. Um, they did a study in 1983, the um, Senate Congressional Committee, and found that 85% of everything doctors are trained to do is either ineffective or harmful. And so they've recently done another study, similar study in 2010, and found that it's now 89% of everything doctors are trained to do. This is a doctor who's well trained, who's doing everything exactly as he was trained to do it, totally confident, and following all the standard of care. He is going to be harmful slash ineffective 89% of the time. And at what point do you decide that you do not want to engage a um, solution to your problems that's only 11% effective? Well, we can go back to like, why do they leave the United States? Like, so what? I mean, this is like interesting, but why do they want to leave the United States over it? Well, I was, uh, I grew up in the ghetto, and I went to medical school and business school, and came back to the ghetto, purchased a city block, built a medical office building, and started practicing medicine. And so it was my vision that I would uplift the citizens in this area by helping them achieve good health so they could um, get off welfare, get jobs, start their own businesses, and really just turn the whole community around. They would have good health as a resource they could use to become financially independent and enjoy their lives better. That was my view, that was my thing. Also, while I was at Harvard, I did some research on what produced good health. 
And so this research uh, indicated that, that health care does not produce good health. Health care has nothing to do with being healthy. Being healthy meant you had access to clean water, um, adequate shelter, and uh, adequate food, clean food. And that was it. If you had those things, then you were as likely to live to be 100 as anyone rich or poor. That's but those things you needed. And so with that in mind, here I was, I came back to the neighborhood. And so I was focused on, OK, our food supply, our shelter, and uh, water. And so um, I started practicing medicine, and I noticed that um, what I was doing was totally not effective. People absolutely were not getting any results. Meanwhile, I should say previously, before I came back, I had experienced a health crisis where I became vegetarian, and boom, I uh, cleared up all my uh, ailments in like 24 hours. And, and that's like an, an example of exponential healing, where you can get sick over a period of time, but get well in 24 hours. And that's actually totally possible. But, um, so I entered the practice, I noticed what I was telling people to do was absolutely not working. Not only was it not working, people were mysteriously dropping dead. I mean, I would come to work, and I would have an invitation to someone's funeral, um, accompanied by, I mean, just incredible gratitude and parts of the family that I had done so much to help the person get better. And for me, uh, the last draw was when Now I got two bosses, right? One's the drug companies, got the drug rest on the case. And this is an insurance company. The uh, vice president himself personally called me. That's how big an impact this was having. So then, the call's on over with you. Then I get a call from the hospital. And I happen to be between patients, so I take the call. Hi, Dr. Daniels, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine, I'm pretty busy today, but y'all glad I could take your call. Yes, that's what we're calling about. Uh, we've noticed that you're not, your patients aren't being hospitalized at our hospital, and that not many of your patients are getting x-ray tests done at our hospital. We want to know, are you using another hospital? 